What's going on, Step Nation? MC Shaker here back with another credit video. So listen, as y'all know, this year of clarity is coming up. 2020 is a year of clarity. And it's for all Step Nation. We'll get everything together with ourselves, including our credit and finances. So this video series is about that. I'm sorry I have everything set up right now because the, my other computer, which I generally connect to, I'm gonna find a way to connect that to this computer too, even though I have a second monitor, thanks to Major, but that too, that is over there. That, I don't know if y'all, let me just show y'all right quick. This is my other monitor. And so we have the our whole setup interface, other monitor. And so I can actually now see what I'm talking about as, as well as I'm watching <laughs> this. So um, this, so please, as always, like, subscribe and comment so if you have any credit questions send them to shakycredit at gmail.com um we have a lot of videos coming up about that topic and it's something i really want you to do you can fix your credit or start fixing your credit today for very very little money if you just invest a little time um i am not a i am a, a licensed I don't know if it's even still, I don't know. It was, I don't know. I have to check on to see if my um thing is still licensed, but I was a licensed by the state of Louisiana as a, a consumer credit advocate, which means I can advocate on your behalf. So I know a little bit what I'm talking about. Also, at one time in my life, I was a fraudist, which is a fraud artist. And so I um know a little bit about this credit stuff. Um, as y'all, well, many people that know me already know. So this is 2019. It's, I'm making this video 2019 and it's close to 2020. And at least four emails I got asked me about a CPN. Now I explained what trade lines are in the video before this one. So if you don't, so if I'm not gonna go into what that is again, I'll just go ahead and explain what a CPN is and what you should do if you need one, if you want one, if it's legal, because there's so many some stuff out there. So I'm going to just break it down to you in lamest terms on what a CPN is and the truth about it. All right. So a CPN is an acronym. The C stands for credit, the P stands for privacy, and the N stands for number. That's what that's what the acronym is. The acronym was made up by us, meaning people. We made that up. There's no such thing as a CPN that is issued by any government entity at any point in time. Gotcha. Understand. So CPNs have something to do though with two government agencies. And I will explain that now. The first one is the Social Security Administration. The second one is the IRS. So the Social Security Administration it issues social security numbers to United States citizens. The IRS issues taxpayer identification numbers, employer identification numbers to US citizens or people that have, or people or businesses that have a financial, that have, that need numbers for financial purposes, for um, banking purposes, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, you have to understand that. So the Social Security Administration issues a social security number to U.S. citizens to keep track of their life earnings for when they retire or turn 62 and a half, I think the last one is, they can take part and get their social security check. It's also for social security disability income for people that are disabled to have. You pay into social security as you work. You get out of security, social security when you're unable to work because of a disability or you are, um, or you are too old to work anymore. And it was set up, it was a long time ago, they put this into, into effect. The, your social security number, why they ask you your social security number with it, banking, finance, credit, et cetera, et cetera, is because this. Way back in the gap, computers were very, very, they couldn't do names, they couldn't do biometrics, they couldn't do all this stuff. And so the easiest way to keep track of information for someone was by a number. It's just why you have bank account numbers and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because computers could, and computers and they, they can go numerically. And so banks got together and said, well, what is, well, how, there's two John Smiths in this town. There's three John Smiths. There's 10 John Smiths. Well, how do we dignify, how do we segregate or separate which John Smith we talk about when it becomes to this transaction? 
So, and so the reason we do that, the reason they did that is using a social security number. Because what happens is, even though this for John Smith, all four women have four different social security numbers. And it was also a way for banks to identify that someone was a U.S. citizen because they all because generally the Social Security Administration does not issue Social Security numbers to people who are not U.S. citizens. Like I can't be in France to get a U.S. Social Security number. You get a, a French one, I'm assuming, or whatever they have over there. But in the United States, I have to be a U.S. citizen to get one. And so this is a way for them to easily vet a numerical system of identifying people as well as ensuring that the people were U.S. citizens and had a legal right to bank in this country. Um, so that's what the Social Security Administration did. The IRS, on the other hand, was to... So banking systems back in the gap were unable to handle any... was based, predicated on that nine-digit number that pretty much every U.S. citizen had. And so when the IRS rolled out how they would do it for businesses, employer identifications and taxpayer identification numbers were built on a nine nine number scale to make it easier for banks to be able to mitigate that data. All right. So with that being said, into the credit bureaus, <laughs> those wonderful people over there, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic there. Um, those people got together and said, well, how can we keep information on Americans? Well, to bank in this country, you basically have to have a social security number. So we'll just use that, what the banks use. And that's how we will identify the difference between just John Smith and Matt John Smith. We'll go by the social security number. Social security number. Now, the credit bureaus are not government entities. So they have absolutely no access to your social security number. They cannot verify that it is your social security number. They cannot, they are forbidden to do this. They, it's a long-standing rule. The Social Security Administration is not for finances. The Social Security Administration, the only reason they use it for finances is because everybody has one. And it's kind of like a thing. And I'm going to show you how it gets into the law in a second. So bear with me and just sit down and chill and listen to the good old story. <laughs> so the but how do credit companies know that that's your Social Security number? And this is how they know. You tell them. <laughs> When you fill out an application and you and they ask you what's your social security number, you put in a number. You tell them your number. And that's if you've never had credit, if you've never had your credit report ran, if you have never had nothing, they don't automatically have a credit score for you. They don't have anything for you. What happens is when you apply for something, they build a file from that. So they put this name with this social, with this address, based on what you provided in your very first application. So when you first, when they told you, and you crawled up, and your mama said, well, in our age, you apply for a sales code. That's how you get credit. Sales used to give you a little $100, $200, and that's how you started getting credit, bad or good. Or you put the lights in your name, or you just move into an apartment, and you apply. And they ask you your social and all that stuff like that. What they do is send that information to the credit bureaus in the application and what's called an inquiry. If there is no file, the credit bureaus make one based on the information on the inquiry. And they, they send back the information that we just don't have a file on, so they don't have a credit score we could we could make for you. And so that's how the credit bureaus actually initially get your information. You give it to them. You do. Not no one else, not the Social Security Administration, not the income tax, not anything. You do. The IRS does not share information with the credit bureaus. The... <laughs> the the finance, there's no social security ministry does not share information with the credit bureaus. The credit bureaus are not part of the government in no way, shape, or form, and they don't share information. The social security, the credit bureaus don't have a computer link to the social security administration or IRS. So if you go and make, fill out an application in the name of Scooby Doo and put the social security number 555-667777, guess what they're going to do? They're going to create a file for Scooby Doo 555 That's what we're going to do. It's going to probably be denied or whatever it is, but they're going to say we don't have, you know, there's no information. And that's what it is. All right. So this is where the CPN ideology comes from. The fact that the credit bureaus don't have access to the Social Security Administration. So enter. The FBI, the Department of Defense, really. I said FBI, but it's not just FBI. It's the Department of Defense. When someone who's a foreign dignitary or somebody has to come over here and do some type of financial something, they 
our American banking system and credit system is predicated on the social security number or a nine digit number. Um, they generally had to have a number to do banking in this country, um, just for whatever. And so the government actually issued them a sort of a number in that way. We're referring to it as a CPN, but I don't think that they didn't call it that. They called it something else, um, which was a, a number that they used to bank. So foreign dignitaries who might have been born here, like your ambassadors and diplomats and stuff like that. Uh, also, the next part of that would be people that's in witness protection. So what happens is they would need a new number to use in place of a social security number to exist in this country. And so they would get that from whoever they're in witness protection from. Um, so those were, and so then also the federal government started extending this to people who were high profile and especially when the advent of identity theft happened, people who were so, who were high profile people who needed a number to bank, but still protect their uh, an anonymity, such as senators, the president, of course, would probably have a number that he uses that is not his actual social security number, um, vice president and these people like that. So these people would have those numbers that were not actually their social for, for protection, but a number they could use to kind of mask, but still be able to do financial transactions. So this is the these are the people that are legally allowed to use that number in place of a social for those purposes. Um, they won't be prosecuted and they won't do anything because this is the next part of it. So once people started figuring out that the credit bureaus don't have access to the SSA and they, can, they can't tell you that that is your social, the only way that they can tell you that that's your social is because you told them initially when you started. So basically, if I fill out an application that's with this name and a different social, but I don't tie it to my address or my phone number or my anything, the credit bureau will create a file. And once that file is created, it's like active in their system. And so I can go and apply for stuff with the information that I gave them in adverse to the information that's actually mine. So once people figure that out, that's when this whole CPN, uh, credit privacy number, uh, social credit number, all kind of stuff, all that started existing. People started figuring out that I could still, so generally speaking, this is what happens. When you go for apply for a loan, one of the only things they're gonna, they're gonna ask you for your ID, but your ID don't have your social on. And so by that being said, I could go give them my ID and tell them any social and that's, and they'll, if the, if the file is created based on me applying for credit, I could then go and say, but hey, <laughs> this is my, my new me. And so it would give me a blank credit profile. But by me doing that and sometimes getting approved, sometimes not getting approved, whatever the case may be, I would actually not have loans. And then I would, that means that I would have trade lines on my credit file because I'm acting because they didn't ask me for my social is whatever I told them it was and um I put on the application generally speaking they don't so if they and then so we got a little banks that smart and hip to that and say well we're gonna start asking for the social security card but then people start being creatively and showing their social security don't I don't have a card but here's my check stubs which basically anybody can print um or here's something that's verifying my social that's other than whatever it is, my employee ID card or whatever the case may be. And so this is how people started with the whole CPM fiasco. All right, so the next part of that is, so what it would essentially do is they would give you a number, tell you use a different address, tell you use a different phone number, different email address, nothing that could correlate that your actual file but your file, because there could be two John Smiths, there could be two MC Shit. No, there can't be two MC Shit. Let me take that back. There could be two. My real name is Rodney Russo. So there could be two Rodney Russo. There is actually two Rodney Russo. I actually met the other Rodney Russo, but that's another story for another day. He's white. But <laughs> that's another story for another day. So, but it could be two or anything. And so, with that being said, people, but they won't have the same social. And so that's how they would do that. They would use the number that they got, a nine-digit number that they either bought or whatever the case may be. Now, say, for instance, you are the victim of identity theft. 
And so you want to use something that is correlating. You don't want to give your social to a bank. This, so it's having, is using a nine digit number and we could say a CPM, we'll call it a CPM, but we could call it anything. We could, you know, we get came up there, we could call it a pillow. It's using a pillow, <laughs> you know, so, so it's using a CPM legal in a sense. The answer is really yes. And I'll show you why it's legal. And I'll show you where the illegalities come in from a CPM if you pay attention. So is using this number legal? Yep. If you tell them, that's what you're doing. <laughs> so credit is this. Banks are making a decision based on your history on whether to extend you financing or not. That's what it is. And so your history is supposed to be accurate and truthful for that. And they have thresholds whether they want to extend you credit or not. That's their choice. There are banks. Their object is to be profitable. So they don't want to extend credit to people that's probably not going to pay them back. They don't make money unless they get paid back. It's very expensive for them for it to do a, a lot of stuff. All right. So suffice so to say, the credit bureaus don't care. The banks do. So this is the only legal way to use a CPM or any number that's a nine digit number for banking purposes. You go in and apply for a loan and they ask you for your social. And you say, I do not want to give you my social, which is not a requirement, but I do not want to divulge my social because of privacy concerns, identity theft, whatever the case may be. But here is a nine digit number that you can use in place of my social for your banking purposes. And here is my actual credit report. Once you have it certified from um, the credit bills, it's a certified copy of your credit report, a, a, a verified actual copy of your credit report, not the one that you just print out yourself, but the actual, <laughs> the actual from the credit bureaus showing your credit report so that the banks can make a financial decision, then you can proceed. But if you put in where it says social security number and you put in your CPN and don't tell them that this is your actual and show them your actual credit credit, you have actually at that part committed bank fraud. You have defrauded the financial institution because they actually see a social security number. You can put a statement, I don't want to give it to you. Here's my social, but here's another nine digit number that you could use. They would they don't want that number, but they actually see a, a, your credit score and credit profile. And then that's how they make their financial decision. But if you tell them this is my social security number and that is not your social security number, you basically and you sign your name, you basically had that parent committed fraud. You have committed bank fraud. And that is against the law. Now, this is what was happening. When 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 people got onto this, they just started making so making profiles with credit profile numbers. And so when they did that, what they did started is started adding trade lines. They started buying trade lines and adding them to a CPN. Buy so what happened is because the CPN initially had no credit whatsoever, it was like a blank slate, it was like clean. And so what happened was by you adding, so you starting off by adding a lot of positive history because you're buying trade lines, add them to a CPN. And so the credit report bureaus are reporting this perfect credit history. Like you can see with a CPN that was seeing seven, 800 credit scores in 30, 45 days coming from nothing. And so this was a good thing for them in a way because they were like, um, oh, okay, what? Well, like, boom. So with a seven, 800 credit score, you can get proof of pretty much anything. So it was going to get houses. It was going to get cars. It was going to get credit cards. It was going to get instant credit. It was going to get whatever, whatever, running it up. And so, of course, they were not paying them back. And so the banks was like, wait, why would this person who never missed a payment late of anything in their life all of a sudden just stop paying it? They didn't lose a job. Did it, what, what happened? And so they looked and they saw, hmm, something is not adding up here. And so somebody at the bank just sit down and started looking. Your social security number is not very hard to find. So they started looking at your name. They started looking at age range. They started looking at the application. They started looking at a lot of stuff and trying their best to match it up. And once they found out the real you and your real social and your real stuff, then they realized they were defrauded and they would file charges against you. And that was curtains. Y'all could do Google this. People that went to jail for, for CPN. They didn't go to jail for the CPNs, but they went to jail because they defrauded the financial institutions, defrauded the financial institutions by using the CPN in place of their social. And that is against the law. That is a crime in every state of the union. No matter what state you're in, it's a crime. 
So the use of CPNs is in its sense not is not illegal because you don't have to you can give them any number. They can use any number that could fit their system for your banking. But if you try to build this CPN by adding trade lines to your CPN, and trade lines to your regular credit is fine. And trade lines to your CPN is fine. But don't get caught. Because this is how you get, when you miss the payment, that's what it is. I just showed y'all, I did a video, video where I miss payments. People miss payments. The only person I know that's consistent with the CPN was somebody that um that um actually had a bankruptcy. And so they was actually doing, they was just in a situation where they couldn't get credit, but they needed credit for whatever they need. And so, um, but guess what? They don't miss payments. See, the bank ain't gonna care. <laughs> if you make your payments all the time, the bank don't care. They get their money back. That's what they want you to do. But when you miss a payment, they start looking at it. So that's when you go to jail, when you miss a payment or don't pay or whatever the case may be. But um, I know somebody that's actually using the CPM right now and built it up. And they, they actually committed a crime, but the bankers don't care because they get their money. So should you use a CPM? Well, if you never go miss a payment, go ahead, sister, go do what you do. If you think there's a possibility that you might miss a payment or whatever it is that you do right now, I don't suggest you do it. And that's 99% of us. Because <laughs> I just like I know somebody that's using a CPN and just riding and going through with their life, I know 10 people who got in trouble for using CPNs. So a CPN in a sense is legal, but the use of it is illegal. So I want y'all to know that. So is it right for you? Probably not. If you're part of the 99% of Americans that's going to miss a payment or something in their life, it's, it's probably not for you. Um, because you are actually committing a crime. If you're cool with that, hey, go get your CPM. Now, let me say this. <sighs> there is no such thing as a reputable CPM company that you could go through. There is none. There's no such thing as a reputable CPM company. There's not a company that could sell you a CPM. What they're doing is selling you this service. This is what the service that they're selling you. They're selling you this. Coming up with a number that's not in use by somebody, Attaching it to your name by applying for credit in that number. That's what they're doing. They're, they're, <laughs> they're coming up with a number and they're applying for credit. So that's what they do. You tell them, what well, is my name? And they're going to ask you. So a CPN company will just ask you, what's your name? And what's your, like, your name and pretty much your date of birth. And so what they'll do is apply for credit in the name of the, the CPN with the number and probably like transpose the date of birth at a different address that's not for you. That's no way associated with you. They apply for a few credit cards, a few things, get denied on all of them. But what happens is now the report is built in the credit bureaus. And so therefore, that's now your CPN. Um, that's what they're doing. If they're selling you, a, so they're not selling you a, a CPN that they've been issued or that's issued for you. All they're doing is a service. And let me just show you how this is so, let me see. All right, let me put this over here. See, I <laughs> love that, that. Let me show you. So this is a, a just I just googled CPN, and um, this is what came up, and this is a company. Watch this though. This is, this is, this is. so try merge is this. So a CPN CPN package for one twenty five, fully processed primary trade line X primary trade line access. I don't even know what that means. Features thirty eight email source, guaranteed credit approvals, built strong purpose. Now you can apply with confidence. I guess. Um, a basic CPN. So they spell try merge wrong. That's a big a, a kicker for me. Is you spelling the word wrong? Do you have a validate CPN number? A validated or valid? Check now. So this is like a big kicker because you spell something wrong. It's like really automatic. So this this is so fake and foolish because guess what? You can't even. There's no place to go where who can I talk to? Is there, you know, let's call him and see what happened. We ain't doing that a lot of life. <laughs> let's call him and see what happened. I don't know. They're probably, they're probably, um, and if they tell me anything, I'm gonna tell y'all why it's just like this is foolish. This, this, this is a random one. I, it's not, I'm not endorsing them at all. I'm just telling you what they're doing. 236. All right, let's call him and see what happened. If I get a voicemail, it's foolish. It's not real. <laughs> if I can't talk to nobody and be like, where you're located. Monday through Friday, 10 to 6 Eastern. Oh, they're in Ohio. Now.
Hello? If you leave a message, we will return your phone call within 24 to 48 hours. The fastest way to contact us is to email us at info at creditpro800.com. Nope. They spell stuff wrong on the website. There's no immediate, let me talk to somebody. It's not. There's no address. There's no nothing. That's the cell phone. I can almost promise you. So there's no legitimate person that's selling you a CPN. They're selling you the service of basically applying for credit with a different number and a different address. A different number, address, and a different a different number. That's all they're doing. So that's what a CPN is for y'all that didn't know. Is it legal? Yep, and no. <laughs> if you want to take that risk, child, go ahead and do you. I ain't tripping. That's all you. If you want to buy a CPN, if you want to pay me to try and merge your stuff for you, oh, yeah, you could do it there too, sister. You ain't going to say you got it from me, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and merge it for you. They charge $99. I guess I charge 59 <laughs> I'll send you this. They still try and merge CPN. You use it, you go into jail probably. I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> just, I'm so, I've come through. You use it, if you miss a payment, you go into jail. Is it an answer for everybody? No. This is the best answer. This is the best answer. There is, just accept that there is no quick fix to this. Oh, they call me back. They call me back. Hi, how you doing? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Um, yes, I was calling about um, y'all's CPN service. Yes, this is Johnny Credit Pro. How you doing? Um, yes. So I was just calling to find out, um, so y'all have, um, CPN ready to go. How does the process work? I'm just trying to, and also what, and how do I pay y'all? Cause I was looking on the website, but I didn't see like a way to like really. So how do you, yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. Our CPN, yes, yeah, our ability process for you. Our way to pay, we send an invoice out. Once we, once you, <clears throat> once you call the app and do what we do at that point, we go ahead and um, process your order, and then once your, your order is processed, we send you an invoice. And on the invoice, you can pay um, through PayPal, Cash App, or Zelle Pay, either one. Okay. So whatever convenience, if you have a credit card through PayPal, whatever way. So that covers every payment method that you can do. And then once that's paid, we go ahead and um, send you out your um, CPN number. Um, You'll send out by so email? Yeah, yeah, that's how I always read it. You don't get a card with the C, um, CPN numbers. You get your, you know, what happens is you fill out the application. Um, we send you back your CPN number with all the relevant information. And what that is, is your CPN and check it. Because you go to, like, we get seeing the link that, like, the, the views that you can go and check the number to make sure it, it's valid. Um, and then it depends on um, our, our way. If you're trying to build it for credit, to use it for what purpose? Um, get a. I was trying to get a um, a credit card. Yeah, like trying to get credit cards up. So, yeah. so what happens at CPN? So that's the thing. One. So what happens is we will see your CPN number with all the, and then we will send you the same day. We will send you. There's three steps. Step one, two, and three. Step the first day you get step one. Step two you get the next day. Then step three. You just basically click onto it. Use the information that we gave you, which is your information. To fill out the application and what that and what that does is after that's completed on the fourth day we send you a link of all the places you can apply to some of them is credit cards some of them is department store cards some is merchant accounts but on the fourth day we send you a link to you so you don't have to guess on where to go and what to do so okay. we walk you through the whole process from start to finish all right and so so with the so with the process for the 125 dollars i'm getting a cpm and it's gonna have a tray line on it already or, or do I have to do something to get for Yeah, the, the, the tray line is this. The, the, hey, the, the myth about, I know a lot of people advertise tray lines and, you know, then like three, five hundred bucks, whatever. Those are called authorized users, okay? That means that somebody adds you to their credit cards for right. 30 days and then right. it's all off. That's what that is. That's right. called authorized user. Right. Um, just to give you a score. That's all that's for. So you get a score. And, but the problem is that's not going to help you get nothing because you don't have none of your own credit. You only have an authorized user. So everywhere you apply, they're not going to approve you because you still don't have credit. You just have a score with the authorized user. Yeah. So we already know that. We've been doing this for 10 years. So our process is we give you a CPN number and then you do our step one, two, and three 
that we send you over the next three days. And then the fourth day, we give you a link where you can apply and there's credit cards you can apply to that will approve you. And then what happened is that reports to your credit. And those are your credit cards. Those are your account. That is yours that you can build up and get a card, credit card, cell phones, whatever. You're building your own report. It's like when you were 18 years old, we're doing the same thing. We're taking you from a CPN number and we help you build your credit up for the next three days. Which only takes us like two minutes to do each step. I mean, it's, it's simple. You just click on the link, fill out the application, and that's it. I mean, so it's not that hard. Okay. But we build it up. So that's what all CPNs are. A CPN is, is, is just a, is your, is replacing your social. The second thing is, is your credit report. That's not the same as a CPN. That's a separate thing like your real life. You have your social, then you have your credit report. Everybody advertise CPN, blah, blah, blah. But if your credit report is not real or don't look real or is not done right, then wherever you apply, you only get denied wherever you go. Right. So that's why we do step one, two, and three so we can build your credit report up. And then at the end of the third day, we send you a link of 16 places that where you can apply because they give you a high credit approval based upon limited credit because you're not going to have no credit. You're going to have zero credit. So these are the places where you can start establishing credit, and some of them are credit card places. Is this? Let me ask you one last question, and I'm gonna just go ahead and fill out the form online. Is this legal? No, that's fine. Is this legal? Because a lot of people say it's legal. Some yeah. people say it's not legal. I'm just lost in all the mix of it. Yeah, I mean, it's legal like everything else. It's legal to drive a car, but if you use it as a weapon to kill somebody, then it was illegal. You know, same thing with the CPN. If you use it for the right thing, then it's fine. If not, then of course, if you're trying to use this to defraud banks and stuff like that with no intentions to pay them back. You know, it could be, you know, debt. Don't mean it's going to be illegal because ain't nobody going to come after you for a, a debt. But nevertheless, that's how it works. And people we people have been doing CPN numbers for 20 years. There's companies that have been doing this for 20 years. We do over a couple hundred a month for the last eight years. So we're talking about thousands and thousands of people that are company. And there's other companies that do way more than us in business. And no one got in trouble. You never read nobody got in trouble for using a CPN number, but they just deny you credit. I mean, that's basically what it is. Okay. So, um, but the thing is, you can't use it for like filing taxes or getting a job, because then that become a word get more on a gray area of you trying to change your identity, to, you know, to get a job or something right. like that. Any government purpose, you can't use it for, because the government has to be able to track. I mean, um, track you for employment, student loans, government loans, anything government you can't use it for, but anything for consumer goods like credit cards, apartments, cars, yes. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm, yeah. I but, it's definitely not, but here's one that thing is definitely not illegal. The only thing you read that's where it says that it's illegal or not use it, everything you read those articles on the internet is always written by the credit bureaus, always. If you always look at the bottom and see what those articles and who written those articles, not one article say anybody ever got in prison or went to jail behind it, not one one article, and they always are written by the credit bureaus because remember the lenders and the banks don't want you to use them because for the simple fact is they want to see your real credit. Right. So that's why they always try to discourage people from doing it, just like anything else. But no, it's not illegal, or we wouldn't be advertising right on the internet. We're not on the dark web; we're right on Google. Right, right, definitely, definitely. All right. Um, so let me, um, I'll go ahead and fill out the application on the line and I'll be waiting for the link for the invoice. Um, I do appreciate your time for, for calling me back and I, uh, and I definitely will be doing it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. Thank you for calling. Okay. All right. So he was kind of sort of right, but kind of sort of not. Um, it's definitely legal to put a, your seat. It's no question. About it. And people have definitely gone to jail. That is not even a question. That's just not even a question. But on his website, um, he kind of basically saying a little bit what I'm saying. Like, it's like how you use it. If you get one and you pay all your bills, they'll never come out. They don't care. You can get paying your back. But if you get one and you miss one payment, you're going to jail. It's not a question. Don't make don't pay them. If you have your own credit and you don't pay your bills, they ain't gonna do you nothing. Just like whatever, they can't, but get mad with you. But in the case of a CPN, you're going to jail. So, um, do you want one? It's 2019, and the credit bureaus and the banks are cracking down on them. I don't think it's that serious taking a risk. I think the best thing you need to do is fix your own stuff, which is not, it's time consuming, 
but it's not expensive or hard, and we will learn that going forward. Uh, any other questions on CPNs? Um, if I get them at shakercredit at gmail.com, I will talk about them um, and answer them as it is, but I will conclude the video on that. So I love y'all. I'll be looking out for the next video which because I'm going to ask a student loan question, and as well as I'm going to show you how to make your very first dispute letter, which is once you get your credit report, now it's time to start the fight. I love y'all, and I will talk to y'all later.